like a lot of people, I was exposed to your TED Talk, Do We See Reality As It Is?, and was was struck by the desktop interface metaphor. Could you please just explain that in brief, and then we can take that in a, a number of, of any directions? The question is, how shall we understand our perceptions and the relationship to reality? Most of us just assume that we know the answer. Our perceptions show us reality. Not all of it, but when I see the moon, there really is a moon. And of course, I don't see everything about the moon, but I see what I need to see. When I see a carrot, I'm seeing the truth. I'm seeing the, the correct shape, the correct color, the correct uh, weight if I pick it up. And of course, I'm not seeing its molecular structure, so there are things I don't see, but, but I'm seeing truly if, if incompletely. And the interface theory of perception takes a different tack on, on what perception is. It, it says, if we take evolution by natural selection seriously, we can ask a technical question. Would evolution by natural selection shape sensory systems to tell truths about the physical world around us or whatever the world might be around us? That's the technical question. What is the probability that natural selection would shape sensory systems to report true properties of objective reality? And you can show through theorems and simulations, some of my graduate students working with me on this, Brian Marion, Justin Mark, and, uh, and, and others, and some, some of my colleagues, Shaitan Prakash, Manish Singh, and I have been, have worked on this, Robert Prentner, a, a number of us have worked on this. And the simulations and the mathematics all agree. The probability is zero that natural selection would shape any sensory system of any organism to reveal any true properties of objective reality. It's precisely zero. And one intuition about that is that fitness payoff functions, we can go into this later on if, if, we, if you want, fitness payoff functions almost surely have no information about objective reality. They, they, they are not so-called homomorphisms of structures in objective reality. And so, so if we're tuned to fitness and the fitness payoffs literally are not homomorphisms of structures in reality, then there's no way that our perceptions can be homomorphic to, to reality, to see the structures of reality. So, so what then, if, if we take evolution of a natural selection seriously, and I think we should, not because I'm claiming it's the final story, but it's the best story we have, right? Science always, to its credit, gets new theories. And what we thought was the, the final theory 100, 120 years ago, we now look back on it, you know, Newton was great, but we have much better theories today. And so I have the same view about all of our scientific theories that we have today. The reason I take them seriously is not because I think they're the final word, it's just that we have, as human beings, no better theories. And so these are so we have to take our, our current theories seriously. And so if we take evolution by natural selection seriously, of course, as scientists, we're going to eventually try to show its limitations, <laughs> right? But, but what it says in its current form is that the probability is zero, that our senses have shaped us to see the truth about the world around us. So what have they shaped us to do? Well, the, the answer for, within evolutionary theory is it's all about fitness. Our sensory systems have shaped us to guide adaptive behavior so that we can live long enough to reproduce, basically. And so one way to put that in a, in a metaphor that's easier to understand is to say that natural selection didn't shape us to see the truth, but it shaped us with sensory systems that are like a user interface to the truth. So, you know, right now we're both sitting in front of laptops mm -hmm. and we're able to, I mean, I've got gigabytes of, of memory and all this circuitry inside my laptop. I have no idea about is it the truth of that. I mean, I, I, I know the words. I'm not a, you know, I'm not a engineer of that type. So I, so I don't really, I, if I had to toggle voltages inside my computer to, to do this video with you, it wouldn't happen. So if I actually knew the truth and I had to actually toggle all the bits and bytes and so forth and voltages in the computer 
to make this video happen and you had to do it, th it wouldn't happen. We have a very simple dumbed down user interface that lets us control the complexity of the computer without having any expertise in what's really going on inside. And that's what evolution did for us. It gave, gave us simple user interface that lets us stay alive long enough to reproduce, to interact with reality in the ways that we need to interact with it to, to stay alive and reproduce without having any idea what that reality is. You, you don't have a need to know, so you don't know. And, and that's just, just the way it is. Very few of us know exactly how the, the desktop interface on our computer works. And you know, you, when you drag an icon to the trash can to delete a file, there's a lot of stuff going on inside there that's involved in dragging, you know, in, in deleting the file. We're blissfully ignorant. And that's what evolution has done. It, it makes us blissfully ignorant about the nature of reality and gives us icons that allow us to control reality. So to be very, very clear, space and time, which we typically think of as fundamental reality, is just the format of our 3D desktop. We have, a, instead of a flat desktop, we have a 3D space-time desktop. And objects in 3D are merely the icons in our desktop. They're, they're not pointers to objective reality in any sense. There's the colors, the shapes, the positions that we see have nothing to do with true colors and shapes in objective reality. They're just a, a, a nice format that evolution gave us. And it, that format's gonna vary from species to species.